welcome one welcome all whether you're watching live or watching another point in time thank you for joining with us in our study as we go through the journey of what happens in the final events of bible prophecy and one of the things that we need to constantly examine is what is god saying for the last time god's last message of love to humanity is found in revelation chapter 14 and it's identified with three angels giving serious warning messages and that's what we need to examine and therefore we are looking at the first angel's message in and the importance of understanding what it means for us on planet earth so let's look at uh, what god is trying to reveal to us today through this message as we journey on on the final events of bible prophecy let us pray before we begin our study merciful kind and loving father in heaven thank you for the privilege you have given to us to understand Lead us, guide us, mold us, fashion us, make us worthy of your calling. Fill us with your spirit, strengthen us from all unrighteousness, and make us whole. Forgive and cleanse, and lead and guide. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the first angel's message in verity. We're looking at the implications of the message in itself. So I've divided these three messages into three parts. The first message is Revelation 14, 6 to 7, which we're going to examine today. that is god's truth and the second angel proclaiming in verse 8 is satan's lies and the third message that is proclaimed by a third angel there of revelation 14 verses 9 to 11 and therefore consequently verse 12 is your choice meaning every single human being's choice these are the three messages first message god's truth that's what we're going to study and second message is about satan's lies and that's what we'll study again next episode and then the third episode we'll see the choices that we have to make this is god's final warnings to humanity so here at prophecylife.org we are always learning from the past to understand the present to prepare for the future and we always promote an evangelistic tool for edification for everyone as an enrich or outreach resource it talks about the past the present and the future it's simply called be ready it's a 40 page a5 size booklet having a panoramic view of the bible key aspects important things that are relevant for human beings and with the final events of bible prophecy chart and its explanation you want the pdf it is available on prophecylive.org right at the top in study section if you want the hard copy get in touch with prophecylive.org and we will provide it to you enter the ark of hope i keep saying this week after week and i will continue to say it because the great controversy between god and satan happened in heaven before the creation of man and it was over the law of god satan wanted to be worshiped that's why he started that campaign and he's still campaigning on earth but soon what does matter soon what will it happen forced worship is going to happen that's what god reveals in his word and that is why he's warning us not to fall into the trap who will you choose it's good to make an informed decision that is why we are studying so enter the ark of hope i'll talk about it again the ark of hope is the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant is the foundation of god's throne god is sitting on it and passing judgment therefore we need to enter the ark we'll talk about that as we go through continuing on this we have a health snippet every time when we give you health snippet we're going through god's vegetation that he has created for our consumption and we're going through them and i always want to say if you have medical concerns or any sort seek medical advice before you use them especially if you have not used them always seek medical advice before you use them today we're talking about cayenne pepper cayenne pepper is simply a chili one of the hottest forms of chili so if you have any concerns seek medical advice now cayenne pepper is scientifically known as capsicum anum belonging to the solanacea family which also includes tomatoes interestingly eggplant and potatoes now capsicum is the compound that gives the cayenne peppers their significant signature spicy flavor and is linked to some health benefits when consumed in supplement form as well a lot of supplements forms are there either in capsules or the powder itself cayenne pepper and a lot of people use it for various conditions 
we listed a few here. Now, the nutritional breakdown for 145 gram hot red chili pepper, one chili pepper we're talking about. The calories are 18. Protein is 0 0.8 grams. Fat, 0.2 grams. Carbs, 3.9 grams. Fiber, 0.7 grams. Vitamin C, 72%. It's a spicy chili, but vitamin C, 72%. Vitamin A, 48%. These are amazing, these two things. Vitamin B6 is 13% and vitamin K is 5%. Now, it's a source of capsaicin. What is that? When you consume this cayenne pepper, it is a supplement form or applied topically. Whether you eat it or apply it topically, it gives you pain relief, improved athletic performance, and lower blood sugar levels. These are some of the general things. Now, if it's also packed with beneficial plant compounds, what are those? Flavonoids, vitamin C, cartonioids, which help protect against cellular damage caused by oxidative stress. Now, these are all studies, serious studies. I'm quoting two studies just to highlight it. Now, regularly eating may benefit overall health. So, a large study in 2021, review of Four observational studies found that cayenne pepper consumption was associated with a reduced risk of death of all causes. What an amazing study that was. And in a study in 2017, uh, people who added cayenne pepper to soup, they desired less salt in the soup and were less hungry after eating that soup with cayenne pepper and felt fuller one hour after the meal. Meaning, when you eat something else, this gave longer, fuller feeling. But there's a caution I want to give. If spicy foods tend to upset your stomach or give you heartburn, you should avoid cayenne, especially in large doses. Therefore, seek medical advice. This is God's pharmacy, meaning God's food he has given us for health and for healthy benefits. And it can be consumed, but seek medical advice if you are concerned. Can we trust Bible prophecy is another question we ask. And we always give an answer from the word of God. It says, when Jesus was on this earth, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that is very prominent. The commandments existed before eternity. In eternity, existed when creation man, exist uh, when Jesus comes, and exist till eternity in the future. The commandments are not nailed to the cross. We need to remember this. A lot of people believe and think commandments are nailed to the cross. No, we need to understand the whole Bible. Please read your Bibles to understand that. So let's look at God's final warning. The first message or first part of the message of his warning. It's in three parts. So again, God's truth. We're looking at God's truth in the first angel's message of Revelation 14, 6. Let me set the stage about the times that we live in. We live in modern times. The influence of the developments in popular thinking may be seen in the state of Christianity today. Science has become the ultimate authority for most Christians today. And by and large, evolution is accepted as a fact. Secondly, the Bible is no longer the word of God, but humankind's word about God. A history book, if you like. That's what it is, the Bible, for a lot of people today. Now, everything, thirdly, I want to say everything must be questioned and tested by human reason. Anything not reasonable must be rejected. This is the mindset of modern times today. So into this world of skepticism and unbelief, God sends the first angel's message of Revelation 14, tailor-made for our times. And that's what we're going to examine. So why does God delay Earth's final destruction. A lot of people know doomsday and they talk about all these things. But why is God delaying it? The answer is found in Revelation 7, 1 to 3. I would recommend read that. I just briefly highlighted the point there. It says, hurt not the earth till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So God wants to seal his people who want to be diligently following him. So note here, God will not permit the final winds of war to bring total destruction upon the earth until his people have received his mark or seal. Now, winds in prophecy represent war, bloodshed and destruction. You can look that in Jeremiah 25, 31 to 33 and Jeremiah 49, 36 and 37. It tells you winds means destruction and bloodshed, which will happen eventually 
when Jesus comes. So God always wants before destruction comes. He always wants. We're going to look at some examples in the Bible. So many are aware that God has sent heavenly messages to his people of every age. Just a few examples here. We're not going through all the examples in the Bible. To his people in the time of Noah, God sent a warning message to his servant Noah and his family that the world would soon be destroyed by a flood because of its iniquities. Genesis 6, 17. And through Elijah, he sent another message in another time. God sent the message to choose who the people will finally follow. If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. That's 1 Kings 18, 21. And then another time he sent through John the Baptist. The wonderful heavenly message in regards to the Lord's appearing came. Make straight the way of the Lord. That's John 1, 23. And today, finally, just coming to our time, whizzing through. We learn through the studies of the symbols of the book of Revelation that God has a threefold heavenly message for his people. That's all humanity. His people means all humanity unless people choose otherwise to not accept this God. So God's final warning to humanity on this planet Earth, final, 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 is the three angels' messages. Now remember, we're going to read Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. Before the closing of the Old Testament, he writes to say that I will raise a people to call and prepare before Jesus comes. That's the prophecy. So let's read that. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto you in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So the third Elijah message to the church. Remember, first Elijah was on Mount Carmel. Second Elijah, Jesus himself was John the Baptist. And this is the third Elijah now being mentioned. So the third Elijah message is to the church which proclaims the three angels message to the world. Now this is a message of reformation and revival which specifically prepares the 144,000 for their work and begins the end of time. So the church has become complacent and has not continued its original zeal to grow into all the truth since Jesus ascended to heaven. Remember that. So God, who knows the future and all things, described the church at this time as the Laodicean church of Revelation 3, 14 to 22. I would recommend read that if you don't know what is written there. Read that and understand that is the state of God's people, those who believe in God in the last days, just before Jesus comes. So now we need to understand the 12 great facts about the three angels message. The three angels message meaning God's final message three parts to humanity in the last time before he comes. So point number one, the three angels' messages are proclaimed by human beings who are aided by the angels. Revelation 1, 1 to 3 talks about it. The three angels' message fly in the midst of heaven, which means that these messages are of heavenly origin. Point number three, the three angels' messages are proclaimed in a loud voice that is with unmitigated power. Revelation 14, 6 and 7 is the very clear understanding. And the three angels are flying. That means the messengers are to be proclaimed with utmost speed and velocity. Number five, the messages are universal in scope. They are to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, as found in Revelation 14.6. The messages of the three angels must be given to their proper order. They are consecutive and cumulative. Revelation 14, 6, 8, and 9. You can see that. And then you see uh, point number seven. The three angels' messages are God's final messages and appeals before Jesus comes again. Isaiah 61, 2 and Luke 4, 19 illustrate. Point number eight. The messages are accompanied by the power of the later rain. Point number nine. These messages are linked to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. Point number ten. The acceptance or rejection of these messages is a matter of life and death as demonstrated by the third angel's message. We are talking about eternal life and eternal death, not simply life and death on earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Point number 11. 
the good news is god will have a victorious people in this world who will receive and proclaim and obey the three angels messages point number 12 lastly the central issue of the controversy and conflicts raging now close to the end of time will be twofold number 1 who you worship and number 2 who you obey who you worship is who you obey who you obey is who you worship there's no other option so are we living in the end times and i want to say yes we are living in the end times let's find out from the bible if we look at this chart this is what god has revealed prophetically what will happen and if you look at the icon there it says we are here that's where we are in the scheme of bible prophecy and on the left of that we are here we have years listed there those years symbolically symbolically presents what has been fulfilled that is why years are there and we're going to test them just to highlight what happened what god said will happen and what happened and then eventually we'll study about what the first angel's message is highlighting so let's look at some history briefly many today do not understand eschatology i too did not for many years until i began to study asking the holy spirit to give me understanding so the events connected with the close of probation and the work of preparation for the time of trouble are clearly presented but multitudes have no more understanding of these important truths than if they had never been revealed satan watches to catch away every impression that would make them wise unto salvation and the time of trouble will find them unready and we don't want that to happen i don't want that to happen i don't want that to happen to anybody who is listening to god's word so let us understand what god wants us to know so let's examine the recent prophetic history that god told in 17 if you look at the column there there are small columns we are describing the small columns as well this first small column is during the papal rule papal rule happened from 538 ad to 1798 ad we are not going that far back into history we are touching the recent history so in 1755 there was a great lisbon earthquake on november 1st on the feast of all saints there was a great earthquake that shook a lot of countries around the world around that area portugal where whatever the earthquake destroyed destroyed after the earthquake fires broke out and destroyed more and after the fires a tsunami broke and destroyed almost everything swept away everything why was lisbon earthquake happened the greatest ever so far because lisbon was the capital of the inquisition where millions of christians were killed from the planning from lisbon in 1780 it's also it's called the dark day it occurred on may 19 so that candles were required from noon on and the moon appeared red as blood the same night now these are all events that are prophesied in the book of revelation i do not put the verses for you but you can study if you want you can look at our previous studies you will find some of these so in 1798 now what happened it is called the time of the end if you read daniel chapter 11 <coughs> excuse me now papal state power was removed by emperor napoleon from france he sent his general berthier and took pope pius 6 captive and he died in captivity from then onwards popes did not have state power they had state power from 538 ad to 1798 ad as bible has prophesied of 1260 years of papal rule now this is called as the deadly wound being received in revelation chapter 3 and verse 13 and verse 3 now knowledge will increase it says in daniel 12 Four, eight to ten, at the time of the end, which is seventeen ninety eight. There are a lot of texts, and these are all studies. I'm just highlighting some points here. In eighteen thirty three, the great linear meteor shower of November happened for twelve hours. For hours, it happened on the November twelfth, eighteen thirty three. For hours, and could we read newspapers in the middle of the night because of the lights from this meteoric shower. In 1840 Millerism William Miller and all were preaching from an obscure regional movement it became a national campaign across America and even in the west rest of the west 
Then in 1929, we're we'll going through this chart. In 1929, a Lateran Treaty happened on 11th February 1929, where the state power was given back to Pope Pius XI. So, by whom? King Victor Emmanuel III of Italy, meaning the deadly wound is healed. According to Revelation 13.3, wound received, wound healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. That's what is happening right now. So we're looking at prophetic history that has been fulfilled. So where are we today? We're looking at, are we living in the last days? Yes, we are. So we are here according to the prophetic scheme that God has revealed. We are living in what is called as shaking times or shifting times. This is the time wheat and tares will be identified. Meaning, Jesus said when he was on this earth, Matthew, very clearly, by the fruits, he shall know them. So proclaiming of the three angels' messages will be happening in this time. Counterfeit reformation is going to happen in Christianity because they're not following the word of God. Preaching the gospel to every nation is going to happen. Replicate God's character in our life is what is going to happen. Study of God's word and to prepare for the final crisis is what is going to happen. People are crying out and finding out, led to search the scriptures right now. And this is also the time moving out of the cities and to live in the countryside as led by God. Ask God what we ought to do in such times that are coming ahead of us. And he will direct your paths. And that is what we need to know. We are living in this time period. That's what we're highlighting here. So now let's again examine the first angel's message with that background and understanding. So here comes the first angel and his message. This message went out with great strength through the earth in the early 1800s. And especially in the 1843 to 1844. The longest time prophecy in the Bible found in Daniel 8.14 was coming to its end and the Holy Spirit stirred up deep interest all over the world. So just to give you a history again from the book Great Controversy of when it started. The Advent movement, meaning the Millerite movement, William Miller and his compatriots were preaching from 1840 to 1844 of a glorious manifestation of the power of God. The first angel's message was carried to every missionary station in the world. And in some countries, there was the greatest religious interest which has been witnessed in any land since the reformation of the 16th century. But these are to be exceeded by the mighty movement under the last warning of the third angel, which we will study eventually. Today we are studying first angel's message, next episode, second angel's message, the following episode, the third angel's message. So. Let's go now to the crux of our study, the first angel's message, which is God's truth. Revelation 14, 6 and 7, and it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. That means all humanity. Nobody is left out. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and sea and all that in the fountains of waters. So, we're going to break down and look at every single phrase that is mentioned in verse 7. In these two verses, in fact, 6 and 7. So, the first point is another angel. Now, the apostle had come across several angels as he beheld various visions and compiled them into scrolls of Revelation. You can see Revelation 7, 1 and 2. You can see Revelation 8, 1 and 2. You can see Revelation 10, 1 and 2, etc. And then you have Revelation 14 now, which we're talking about. While God is trying to give a warning, Satan is trying to distract people from the warning that God is giving. So we're going to look at God's warning and the aspects of his warning. And we'll look at how Satan is countering it. That's what we're going to do in the study. So now there is a serial called Lucifer is Coming. It's a TV show portrays Satan as a good guy. It's a television show on Fox TV series 2016. And the series stars actor Tom Ellis as Lucifer and the tall, dark and handsome and misunderstood fallen archangel now in the city of Angels, Los Angeles. That's, a, that's the series. So he set aside the law of God through self-exaltation, deception, lying, and murder. 
I would recommend read this text. Ezekiel 28, 13 to 15 and 17. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Revelation 12, 7 and 8. John 8, 44 and 1 John 3, 1. To understand what Lucifer is doing to counter God's final message. So, secondly, you see a phrase, flying in the midst of heaven. This angel is flying in the midst of heaven. So, Point number one, the flight of the angels denote the swiftness with which they carry forward the task that has been given to them. I would really recommend read Ezekiel 1, 11 to 14. We're going to use a lot of text, but we won't have time to read all of them. I would recommend read them. Point number two, for how could the final gospel message of Revelation 14 be a witness to the world if they never heard it in the first place? I would recommend see Matthew 24, 14. So one of the most exalted cherubim misused his freedom of choice. You can find that in Deuteronomy 30, 19 and Galatians 6, 7 to 8. So we're looking at the phrase flying in the midst of heaven. While God is trying to do that, an interesting fact came up on my mind. Now there is, uh, look at the picture there. I'm talking about that picture. Lucifer is part of this large binocular telescope which happens to be right next to the Vatican Observatory at Mount Graham in Safford, manned by Jesuit astronomers. So how come this uh, Vatican Observatory has the term Lucifer or the name Lucifer for their large binocular tes telescope? In flying in the midst of heaven, is there some bells ringing? Third point we need to look at them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kinder, tongue and people. So the message is meant to go to every kinder, tongue and people, the whole world, so to say. So point number one under that context is God's end time people that carry an end time message to the inhabitants of the world. See Revelation 10, 8 to 11, Revelation 12, 17 and Revelation 14, 12. These are the people who will be carrying out this message. Secondly, it's an urgent message. So the urgency, earnestness, and power that accompany the messages of the three angels will divide the world into two main groups for the final harvest at the second coming of Christ. Read Revelation 13, 8, Revelation 14, 12, and Revelation 14, 14 to 20. While that message God is trying to send out to the world, see what the devil is trying to do. Remember Revelation 13 was and the dragon gives his power, seat, and great authority to papal Rome. The first beast that comes out of the sea. And papal Rome, how can we say that? There are 81 points in the Bible that identifies papal sea as that beast coming out of the sea. So, now Pope Francis, in the context of digital media, raises serious ethical issues. He says, Cygnus can play an important role in meeting the challenge of toxicity, hate speech, and fake news in the media. So Pope warns against fake news and likens it to crafty serpent in Genesis. It was reported on CNN on February 26, 2018. Let me highlight some things now about the uh, flying in the midst of heaven in terms of what the devil is trying to control and send messages today. There is something called AI, artificial intelligence. This is profoundly leaping leaps and bounds. Harnessing the transformative potential of artificial intelligence by accelerating the adoption of trusted, transparent, and inclusive AI system globally. It's going everywhere. What else is happening? Computing, the future of computing. Now, it's the responsible use of technology is what it's termed as. New approaches like quantum computing and artificial neurons promise to push performance and efficiency even further with regulations, meaning controlled use of technology. And there's something called data science. What is data science? The era of data is upon us. We are an information knowledge generation. It is profiliating at an unprecedented pace, drawing genuine insights and putting insights into action requires a careful understanding of the potential ethical consequences for both individuals and entire societies. So serious things of in terms of the knowledge that is being used today, Knowledge is used today for two things, for good or for bad. We are trying to highlight what God wants to warn the world and how Satan is also using. Look at this. This is profound here. The fourth thing, the everlasting gospel. So point number one under that 
context of everlasting gospel, the God had a devised a way through which mankind was to be saved in case he sinned against the commandments of God. 1 Peter 1, 18-20, Revelation 13, 8. Secondly, Jesus came and died for man. We're talking about the everlasting gospel. John 3, 16, Matthew 20, 28, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, and 1 Corinthians 7, 23. Point number three, today the people of God can look above into the most holy in the sanctuary in heaven where our Savior stands as intercessor and the judge. Colossians 3, 1 to 2, Hebrews 4, 14 to 16, and Hebrews 8, 1 to 12. That is the threefold process of the everlasting gospel. Now, while God is trying to highlight this to the world, what does Satan do? Look at this. Satan lies and Satan wants one to believe. Lie number one, God does not want to hear from you anymore. Not after you have ignored him for so long. That's a lie. Lie number two, this world is too wicked and scary for you to ever find happiness or peace. That's lie number two. Lie number three, because God loves you, your behavior ultimately does matter all that much. Lie number four. If you can't gain a testimony about something right away, it must not be true. Lie number five. Confessing your sins will only hurt the people you love. To spare them that pain, you must keep it a secret. Lie number six. The church's teachings are outdated. Just look at how most of the world believes and behaves today. Millions of people can't be wrong. Lie number seven. There are so many lies, I just put seven. You tried and tried, but you're not just good enough. You're never going to make it home to God. These are all lies from the devil, all of them and much more. Jesus simply says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The devil is, was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth. And there is no truth in him. He is a liar and the father of lies. Very clearly God said that about the devil. So what is the everlasting gospel? We'll highlight that a little bit more. Now Jesus only can forgive, can save, can sustain, can redeem, and he can dwell within. And when he dwells within, every human being will be good and there will not be any issues on planet Earth. That was God's design. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So when this message is given properly and with the power of the Holy Spirit, there will be many miracles and converts for people will be converted to Jesus. Continuing on that, let's read some texts. Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come, meaning Jesus will come. 2 Corinthians 4, 3, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So the gospel should not be hid. Ephesians 1, 13, in whom we also trusted after that we heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Colossians 1.5 For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof we heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Jesus came, died for man, is gone. He said, I'll come back and take you to be with me. Simple as that. And that is what he wants us to have. But there is a perverted gospel from papal Rome given through Satan. Here are just a few out of the countless that exist. Here are some of the errors that have been introduced into the gospel by the Antichrist power during their 1260 year reign, which was 538 AD to 1798 AD. The false baptism of sprinkling that replaces immersion, the false communion service transubstantiation, the false Sabbath, which is Sunday, praying to the dead saints, especially to Mary, forgiveness of sins by the priest and not by Jesus. Purchasing indulgences being revised. Actually, it has been revised. Time magazine on February 22, 2009 said you can use credit card to minimize time in purgatory. Meaning they're selling mercy and grace for money. A mortal man with an immortal soul and ridicules. So those who give the last gospel call 
must have the pure original gospel undiluted that man might see the beauty and the free grace in the plan of salvation. Salvation is free, not by works. And it has to be followed according to how God has revealed in his word. Remember, Jesus prays for unity because God wants all human beings to be one. He's coming for one group of human beings, not various denominations, not various religions. John 17, 19 to 21 says, And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Meaning those who know should tell others. And that they may be one as thou father and art are me and I in thee. And they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So while Jesus was said that on this earth and that is what he wants us to be all one. Now look at what the Pope says. Diversity is a blessing. When all are united in faith, says Pope Francis. Meaning, you can all have your own doctrines, but let's come together. Unity in diversity. That's what he's calling for. So, he says so many statements. I put one or two. Does not matter who you are or what religion you follow. You can still go to heaven. That's what he says. Now, the second, in, sorry, the second point I want to highlight is fear God. This is now verse 7. We so far looked at verse 6. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we are looking at verse 7. Fear God. Point number 1 on that. Even though the concept does not mean we should be afraid of God, I would recommend read 2 Timothy 1, 7 and 1 John 4, 18. It nevertheless does not mean we should approach God as our equal. I would recommend again read Psalms 89, 7 and Psalms 111, 9. So the concept of fearing God also means to keep his commandments. John 14, 15, Jesus very clearly says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14 is the basis of God's judgment, keeping the commandments. That is the whole duty of man. Also see Genesis 42, 18, Exodus 18, 21, Job 1, 8 and 9, and Psalm 66, 16, Matthew 10, 28 and 1 Peter 2, 17. So remember, while God is trying to tell to fear God, meaning love him, meaning adore him, meaning rever him, Satan is trying to deceive people. He's saying hell is not separation from God. He's trying to tell. The problem here is not that hell rather than God becomes the object of fear. Hell is not ultimately about fire, but about God. And God is who is present everywhere at all times will be forever present in hell as a judge. What a false teaching. Now this was, this is found clearly, you can see on the gospel coalition.org, July 31st, 2019, it was reported. Seriously. So why does the gospel angel shout with a loud voice, fear God? Let's understand this. Fear means to respect or reverence God. A recognition of his might and majesty and holiness. When we and others truly see that character there will be born in us deep reverence for an adoration of our maker that will show itself in respect, obedience, service, and the desire to glorify his name by the way we live. That is what it means simply to fear God. I want to highlight another thing here. The seven-year action plan of Laudato Si that the Pope Francis has come up with. Now this Seven year later, the actually the document led to see was uh, released in 2015, and the plan was for five years to educate the whole world about it from 2015 to 2020, which they did. And then on November 14, 2021, they launched a seven year platform for the execution of this led to see plan. It was launched on the 14th of November, which was a world day of prayer. For the poor. So what is it? Ecological conversion, he says, in action. First, they want to ta target families. Secondly, parishes and dioceses. Thirdly, educational institutions. Fourthly, hospitals and healthcare centers. Fifthly, economy. Sixthly, organizations. Seventhly, religious orders. That is the plan. Well, God is calling people to turn back to him and come to him and follow him. Other plans are being made in a subtle way. 
So what is the next phrase that you can find? Give glory to him. What does it mean to give glory to him? Point number one, Jesus carried forward his salvic work on earth for humanity. You can read Mark 1, 35, 35 Luke 5, 16, Matthew 14, 23, and Luke 16, verse 12. Sorry, Luke 6, verse 12. And we also by our lifestyle, Matthew 5, 16, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, and Romans 12, 1 and 2, these are profound. If our lifestyle does not go back to the Edenic state of life that God has created Adam and Eve, we cannot abide with him when we get to heaven. We are especially talking about the last generation that will be alive, that will enter heaven without seeing death. People have to go to the Edenic state of life in everything, including diet. That is the call that God is given. So here, see what the counterfeit the devil is bringing. We wear our wheels with pride and slap our streets with color. We said bonjour to Satan in 1820. This started in 1820 and it was forgotten for some time. But then again, in 2021, this stunning piece featuring music, songs, dance and fabrics returns this fall after being acclaimed at Charlotte in 2021. We are called to give glory to God. But Satan is trying to make people give glory to him. So what does it mean to give glory to God? Let's read some verses. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Meaning people need to see Jesus in our lives, in our words, thoughts and actions. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God and ye are not your own, for ye have bought with a price. Therefore glorify your body in your spirit which are God's. Meaning whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, or whatsoever we do, that's First Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore we eat or drink or whatsoever we do, do it all to your glory of God. That's another text. But let's read First Peter 2, 11 and 12. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from flesh lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that they, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. The day of visitation is the judgment. And eventually the second coming. People need to see those who believe in God to be different from everybody else in the eat or you drink or wherever you go or whatever you do or whatever you act or behave, whatever. Every single thing has to be Christ-like. And only when Christ is in you, we can present that. That is what we need today. So while God is trying to tell, give glory to me, look at what's happening, how the devil is doing things. I'm going to show you some um, great sporting events that happen around the world. Amazing. But on the day of inauguration, see what happens. 23rd July, 2021. Tokyo Olympics inaugural song. Look at this. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Ah. Imagine there's no countries. Isn't that hard to do? Nothing to kill or die for and no religion to imagine all the people living life in peace. Oh, oh, oh. They are creating this one world agenda. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the whole world will be one. Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. Oh, oh, oh. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us one. And the world will live as one. This is written by John Lennon in 1971, but was sung on 23rd July 2021, where 600 countries' representatives were there. Let's look at another one. 28th July 2022. Commonwealth Games opening ceremony in Birmingham, United Kingdom. Unity in diversity, strength and resilience were the themes beamed out to billions of people around the world at the spectacular opening ceremony of the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games on Thursday, 28th July. That's the mascot they had and they did the dance and song and all of that. According to what is described in Revelation 17, which talks about a woman sitting on a beast. And that's what you see in this picture. A woman sitting on a beast. Just to highlight some things. In another 
sporting event. I wanted to highlight three out of all that I could pick, but just three. November 20, 2022, FIFA World Cup opening ceremony. Singura's John Kong. Look who we are. We are the dreamers. We make it happen. Cause we believe it. Look who we are. We are the dreamers. We'll make it happen because we can see it. They believe it, they see it. The chorus is, post chorus is here. Here's the ones that keep the passion, respect. Here's the one that can imagine, respect. Look at another verse. Gather round now. Look at me. Respect the love only way. If you want to come, come with me. The door is open now every day. This one plus two, residents all invited that we do how we do. There was another song as well. Yeah, this one. Now this was sung by three. Those are the three singers there in the picture and the names are there as well. Want to walk and walk on every street? I want to ball out the world at my feet. Hit every discord and not skip a beat. Yeah, yeah. Some nice uh, lyrics there, but look at some of the lyrics. I want to party, party eight days a week. Can you see the extremism pointing there? I promise, I promise you will never, everything gonna work out. Every tomorrow, no matter what goes down, I promise, promise, I promise you now, gonna be, gonna be sticking around every tomorrow, no matter what goes down. And uh, it's a joyful song. You know we better together. Don't want to wait forever. You know we're better together. The time is now or never. You know we better together. Don't want to wait forever. You know the time is better together. Time is now or never. Yeah, you can hop on your own wave. You can ride it for life. But every journey is better when you got love on your side. Beautiful themes. But all bringing one together. Yes. But under what? That is the question. The another context that we have here is the hour of his judgment has come. Since 1844, Christ has been cleansing the sins of God's patient, sorry, penitent people from the heavenly sanctuary. Revelation 1.5 talks about it. Ephesians 5.25-27. So the sins of all such people will come up against them when they appear before a holy God in judgment. I would recommend read Revelation 20, 11 to 13, Revelation 22, 11 to 12. It gives serious understanding of what God is trying to tell about judgment. So the doctrine now, look at Satan, what he's saying. The doctrine once saved, always saved. Meaning you meet Jesus, you, you believe to be saved, and that's it. You can do whatever you want. It, so it teaches that it is not possible for a child of God to sin in such a way that he will be lost. So the doctrine of once saved, always saved, began with the teachings of John Calvin in 1509, and he lived in 1564. That is one of the serious misunderstanding of God's love, grace, mercy, and judgment. So there are going to be a threefold judgment. The call is fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Judgment began in 1844. There are three phases of the judgment. Let's understand this. If you don't understand, you can go and check our uh, prophecylife.org website. We have um, uh, one presentation only on judgment. Phase one, three second advent judgment, first Peter 417. Phase two, judgment during the thousand years after Jesus comes, he takes people to be with him. Thrones are given, everybody sits, books are opened. One thousand years, everybody look at the records and ratify that. God has judged mercifully, graciously, and kindness and mercy. And then phase three, judgment at the close of the thousand years. After the thousand years, everybody comes down. And those who have not gone with him will be punished in fire. Lake of fire. That is not hellfire. You can call it hellfire, but it's not hellfire forever. They won't be burning forever. Judgment. They'll burn up and consume. God will create a new earth and new heaven. So Catholicism has no teaching on the second coming of Jesus, nor a judgment leading up to it. The third phase of judgment you can also re refer to not only in Revelation 20, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. So they have something called the purgatory. Their purgatory points forward to a multi thousands of years of suffering with no second coming of Jesus in sight. If you look at the original doctrines, this is what you would find. So what does this message tell us in brief? The hour of God's judgment has come. All mankind put God first in our lives. 
that's what it teaches honor god above men honor him as creator honor him as redeemer fear him and obey him keep all of his 10 commandments judgment has come meaning begun did you know that the fourth commandment is the only one that tells who god is and why he has authority and it tells us why we should obey him all the questions of who why when where what are found in the fourth commandment so this is the standard of all humanity let's find out from the bible here we are told who will be judged in second corinthians 5:10 and first peter 4:17 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that every man may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad first peter 4:17 says for judgment shall begin at the house of the lord meaning god those believe in god now the standard by which we will be judged is also given in james 2:10 to 12 for whoso shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point he is guilty of all for he that saith that do not commit adultery said also do not kill now if thou commit no adultery yet if thou kill thou art become a transgressor of the law so speak he and so do the day that shall be judged by the law of liberty so most christians today keep nine commandments they don't keep the sabbath commandment the fourth commandment this is sabbath is nailed to the cross how can one commandment be nailed to the cross and the rest of them has to be obeyed even logically speaking those who don't believe in god can say no that is wrong third point here we are told what the whole duty of man is ecclesiastes 12 13 and 14 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for god shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil so today protestants are there there are only two groups in christianity one is called catholics the second are called protestants whether people know it or not protestants are there without a protest so is the protestant reformation over serious things to consider the late tony palmer there's a video at the bottom i'm not going to play that for want of time you can check it up it's still there on youtube the late tony palmer replied in the affirmative alluding to the 1999 john declaration of the doctrine of justification jddj by the lutheran world federation and the roman catholic church he openly proclaimed to the enthusiastic gathering at kenneth copeland's eagle mountain international church in texas that luther's protest is over asked palmer if there is no more protest how can there be a protestant church that's a very prominent question nobody is protesting because they're following the papal change of sabbath from saturday to sunday and nobody is protesting it so maybe now we are all catholics again that's what he said 1999 for palmer marked the end of the reformation because in 1999 the joint declaration was signed and finally on 31st october 2017 in lund in sweden pope francis and munib yonan the president of the lutheran world federation has signed a joint declaration at an ecumenical prayer service commemorating the greatest schism in western christianity stating that what unites the two traditions is greater than that which divides them they say the protest is over no protest is not over there are so many who are protesting including myself to say we need to follow the bible and not tradition so but there will be a remnant the bible says that let's read about them three texts there's more but we let's see the three texts revelation 12:17 says and the dragon is wrath with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed woman means all christians remnant of her seed means this is a small group which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ So this remnant keep all of 10 commandments of God. Revelation 14:12 again highlights them. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, meaning all 10 commandments, not one two you can't pick and choose. It's a package of 10. Revelation 22:14 again gives that highlight of the package. Blessed are they that do his commandments, meaning all 10, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. the woman is christianity and out of them come out a remnant only those who part of this remnant keep all of god's commandments will be alive and go with jesus when he comes 
if anybody is alive and not keeping all of the Ten Commandments, including the Fourth Commandment, which is Sabbath, or commandment worshipping and keeping the Sabbath holy on the seventh day, Saturday, will not go alive when Jesus comes. Serious things for us to consider. So here, the last context for us to examine, worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea. Point number one under that context, God has expressly made it clear that he alone deserves worship by virtue of the fact that he is creator. Genesis 1 and 2, Exodus 23 to 5. Isaiah 45, 5 and 6, Isaiah 41, 21 to 23, and Psalms 95, 6 and 7. Point number two, it bear a clear allusion to the Sabbath commandment as outlined in Exodus 28 to 11. It highlights the tokens of our creation and redemption in God alone. Genesis 2, 1 to 3, Psalms 95, 6 and 7, Deuteronomy 5, 21, 12 to 15, and John 8, 34 to 36. Now, Satan had attempted to observe the place of God in the heart of mankind, thus securing the worship that is due to God alone. Recommend reading Romans 1.25, Isaiah 14.12-17, Matthew 4, 9 and 10, and Revelation 13.8. Remember, Satan deceived one-third of angels that were in the presence of God. What about human beings on planet Earth? Sinful human beings. So, just to highlight about worship God. Today, many people are worshipping man on earth. I want to highlight one or two. Here, a Roman emperor bows to the Pope. It's called the term walk to Canossa. It refers to the trek of a holy emperor, Henry IV, from Speyer to Canossa Castle in Emilia, Romagna to obtain a revocation of the excommunication imposed on him by Pope Gregory VII. He was forced to humiliate himself on his knees, waiting for three days and three nights before the entrance gate of the castle, while a blizzard raged in 20th January 1077. How different the meek and lowly Jesus who washed the feet of even Judas, who he knew, will betray him. Another picture here. Now, Catholic priests bow to the Pope, prostrately falling on the floor. Revelation 13, 3 says, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, this beast being identified papacy here. Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Serious revelation God is giving, and we can see the fulfillment. That's what I'm trying to point out. Soon and very soon, Everyone will have to make a choice. We're talking about the first angel's message. Judgment has come. Are you going to keep all of God's commandments or not? Will you stand when everybody is willing to bow because of the judgment that is going to come? There's going to be judgment on earth too before actually God judges. Revelation 13, 15, 16 and 17 talks about it. If you don't obey the law of the land, which is contrary to the law of God, you'll be punished. Prevented to buy and sell, persecuted and killed if necessary. Everyone will have to make a choice. And when everyone makes a choice, either you have a choice to worship God and obey his commandments, all of them, ten commandments, including worshiping on Sabbath, you receive the seal of God. If you choose to follow the law of the land, which is going to come eventually at some point, we don't know when, which is identified as the mark of the beast, Sunday is identified as the mark of the beast. You'll receive the mark of the beast and not go when Jesus comes. Choice is us. And that is why it's important to study and understand. We still have the free will to make the choice which God has given us. Make an informed choice. I'm not forcing anybody to make any choice. We are studying more just to understand so that we can make a choice led by the Holy Spirit and be led by God to guide us in the paths of righteousness. Revelation 12, 12 says, For the devil has come down unto you having great thought, because he knows that he hath but a short time. Enter the ark of hope. We started with this. I'm closing with this. The ark of hope is the ark of the covenant. That is the foundation of God's throne. God is sitting in the most holy place on his throne. And the basis of his judgment is the Ten Commandments. We saw a few texts in our study today. So Jesus is saying in John 10, 16, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. There shall hear my voice. There shall be one fold and one shepherd. 
That is what God is trying to tell us. So behold, I stand at the door, he says, and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. That's Revelation 3.20. So if you have Jesus in your heart, hold on to him and keep his commandments. That's why you have Jesus with you. If you don't keep all of his commandments, you don't have Jesus with you. That's what the Bible presents. If you don't have Jesus, I would recommend have Jesus with you. That means obey his commandments. If you love him, obey his commandments and he will be with you and abide with you, sit with you and guide you in the path so that you will not fight to the wiles of the devil. When everybody has made their choices on planet Earth and whether they like it or believe it or not, ready or doubtful, whatever the situation, when choices are made, God is going to raise up. Jesus is going to raise up and he's going to come. To take his people home. My, my last question is. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Let us pray. Merciful, kind and loving father. Thank you for revealing O oh Lord all that you are. And sending us the warning message. Of what will transpire just before you come. How the devil through papal system. Will bring deception. And take away many. But you have given in your word. All of this so that we can study and understand. Not, not, not be deceived but follow you. And therefore, give the grace of mercy and Holy Spirit leading in our lives to lead us in the paths of righteousness so that when our names are looked upon, you would not find us wanting, but would rejoice and say, enter into that kingdom. Afford us that grace and lead us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, one. Thank you all for joining with us. May God be with you all. And God bless.